is for the first time we have all three Gen 2 models here in the Patriot Campus HQ. Hear from me firsthand uh, the reason why Gen 2 has come about. So come with me, take a look at what I consider with a very, very biased opinion, um, the absolute pinnacle of camper trailers, camping or overlanding uh, in the world right here at Patriot Campus HQ. Let's go and have a look. Hi guys, welcome to the Patriot Campus uh, showroom here on the Gold Coast. Um, some really exciting news, the Patriot Campus showroom is now open uh, retail back to customers. We've still got our dealer network in Australia, and if you've been following us through on our social media, Patriot Campus and Patriot Games, uh, you'll notice we've been putting a lot of effort into setting up our brand new Las Vegas store. So, I haven't been on the forefront with presenting the Gen 2 with everyone. We've just been so busy since launch. And actually today we've grabbed the cameras because for the first time we have all three Gen 2 models here in the uh, Patriot Campus HQ. So I thought it'd be an uh, amazing opportunity to run everybody through, hear from me firsthand, uh, the reason why Gen 2 has come about. Now Gen 2 has been, it's been two years, maybe two and a bit years in the making. We actually think 2021, we took the first Gen 2 out for testing. Uh, we've done about 15 odd thousand kilometres in that trip with the entire engineering team. And we have just been so focused on ensuring this thing was absolutely perfect before we launched it to market. Uh, you would have seen in all the big promotional videos, uh, the Flinders Rangers trip, we've done about 20,000 Ks on that trip. I was in the background uh, with the engineering team and the media team, um, and we came back with another big list. And it's just been just this massive whirlwind on Gen 2. Gen 2's just come about everything that I've ever wanted uh, from this brand, everything that Sarah has wanted from uh, a Patriot camper. My father's been very, very heavily involved uh, in the R&D and obviously all the boys and girls here that make up our Patriot campus. So today I'm really, really proud uh, to show you guys through. I've actually just got back from the Colorado show and it was the first time in a long time that I've done a full three days uh, at a trade show and having the ability to be there and just, you know, with the family, with Sarah and my kids and really concentrate on meeting new customers and explaining to them, you know, what all the features were at Gen 2 that, you know, I kind of had this idea that it's probably about time that I got back in front of the camera where Patriot Campers is uh, concerned and, and give you guys the, the why, the reason, you know, we've always been in the background of, of Patriot Campers, um, you know, we are the guys that develop them, we are the guys that use them, everything you see on Patriot Games, um, you know, we, there's no smoke screens and mirrors, it is what it is, we've showed you our failures, our successes over the years, and this for me is definitely uh, the number one success that this company's ever had. So come with me, take a look at what I consider with a very, very biased opinion, um, the absolute pinnacle of camper trailers, camping or overlanding uh, in the world right here at Patriot Campus HQ. Let's go and have a look. So you can see here uh, in the showroom, we've got the new Gen 2 X3. Uh, we've got the brand new Gen 2 X1, which is the one I'm most excited about, and the one I'm gonna show you through today. And then we've got the, uh, the Gen 2 X1N. Now, before I get into this video, uh, the one thing that I wanna state is, fundamentally, fundamentally, and I know there's some people here that, that are not gonna like me saying this, from the tent down, all three trailers now are very, very, very similar. Now, obviously with the X3, if you follow Patriot Campers or if you're in the market looking for one of the Patriot Campers products, you're gonna know the X3 has a fold down uh, tailgate at the back. Um, so it's a live-in trailer. Uh, the X1 and the X1N from the body set down are fundamentally identical. Now, what that does is it gives you pretty much the same storage right across the board. The one thing that I will say is the usability of the storage in the X1 and the X1N is more suited for more people. So if we go back and we look at the evolution of Patriot Campers and where this all kind of came from, the X1 was the family trailer. At that stage, I had twin boys that were eight or nine years old and obviously my pride and joy, my uh, daughter, was four years old at the time or five years old at the time. And what I really needed was a camper trailer that was capable of taking all of the gear uh, for mum, dad, and three young kids. And that's where the storage come from. And I'll touch on that a little bit later on. But the reason that I'm saying that is I still consider in the, in the model range, the Patriot X1 is still the family trailer. Now with a little bit of a twist. This is now back to probably my favorite out of the whole Patriot Campers range. 
And that might be again because I'm a little bit biased and it is still my baby and it is still the, the product that, that launched the company. The X3, sorry, is still more suited uh, for a couple. Uh, the Grey Nomads now are absolutely loving it with the automation. You've seen all the automation uh, throughout some of the product videos. I'm not gonna concentrate on the automation of the tent set up in this video today. I'll do another video uh, in the showroom over the next couple of weeks and I'll run you through the tent setups, but I just wanna run through the basics of the model range. The X1N still offers, uh, the X1N offers a lot more than it did in the, in the Gen 1 model because now we do have the power station built into the X1N. The airbags are now standard in the X1N. Fundamentally, like I said, it's exactly the same as an X1, but no rooftop tent. And the reason that we've kept the X1N as part of the model range is it gives the ability for people that don't want the full canvas setup to put anything that they like on the roof. Whether you want a conventional style rooftop tent, you want an A-frame HUD uh, style tent, you want a pop-up hard shell tent, you can do whatever you like. For me, the X1N is still about trips with the boys. And I still do a lot of trips. Generally speaking, we'll chuck four, five, six wags up on top, and then the boys will bring all the toys, you know, quad bikes and hunting rigs and all the rest of it, and we'll go out west and we'll just use that thing as a chuck wagon. So it still gives me the ability for all of that storage. I've still got the kitchen, I've got the power system. Now I've got the advantage of a 70 uh, 75 litre fridge, but I can chuck everybody's bedding up on top. So I might actually start at the front, and what I'll do is I'll probably walk around this trailer like I would, I'd walk around um, at a trade show, somebody kind of seeing it for the very uh, first time. The biggest impact on the Gen 2 uh, is definitely the front end. Uh, we've taken a lot of automotive styling. We've made some big capital investments into hard tooling uh, to really give us that point of difference and, and take away from the traditional Patriot box sheet metal uh, shape. Not that there was anything wrong with the utilitarian, but for us is what I feel like we've always been the innovators. We've always been at the forefront of this style of camping and we really wanted to show the world what, what we could do with everything, all the knowledge that we've gained over the past almost 10 years of Patriot campers now. So there's some big advantages that come with that as well. Obviously the aesthetic styling uh, of the front of the trailer, um, it gives it you know, a much, much nicer, cleaner, more modern look but the entire front of the trailer is now protected. So this material here is UV stabilized. Um, our customers, you know, in the past would have noted with the Rhino coating that we used to put on the front, it wasn't very UV stable. There was a bit of maintenance that was involved to keep that looking good. Uh, there is no maintenance uh, required with this. It's much lighter than the aluminium and the, and the Rhino lined um, coating that we used to have on top. But the other big, um, big advantage here is the impact resistance of this material when it comes to stone chips and all the rest of it. This is going to look much, much better for much longer. If you're doing big gravel roads, say for example, you're doing, you know, the Gibb River Road is notorious for it, or you're going to run the Plenty Highway, um, you know, across the centre of Australia, I definitely still recommend a stone mat. Um, it helps protect the chassis, but uh, protects the whole front end of the trailer as well. Um, you'll notice on this side, a great feature is the new uh, gas bottle um, storage boxes. They open from the side now, not lifting the gas bottles from the top. And I might touch on that right now. Functionality has been the key to Gen 2. Removing steps, removing as many steps out of the process of setting up and packing down a campsite is what this thing has all been about. And what Patriot Campers has always been about, nothing's changed. We've just gotten so much better at it. You know, it is important to me, I still, really focus on not unhitching. If you just watched our recent uh, Fraser Island video um, with the boys from America or the families from America, you'll notice in that entire trip, I think I might have unhitched my trailer maybe once the whole trip. I took it everywhere with me, towed it across the inland tracks of Fraser Island. Uh, jump onto YouTube and check that video out. That was good fun and that was Patriot life at its absolute best um, with some amazing people. Um, so you can see here the gas bottle guard. Um, you've got compression latches here as well. These are lockable and also uh, the front is lockable. You've got big grates at the front. So on uh, this model on the Gen 2, we've really concentrated on making the trailers even more dust proof than they were in the past, if that was possible. I think any manufacturer that tells you, oh, the trailers don't leak, they're completely dust proof. Well, oh, that's not true. Um, they probably haven't experienced silt in the United States or they haven't experienced bull dust when it comes out to the center of Australia. Um, but we've really focused on pressurizing that cabin. So now we have 
two P-Core filters, one in this side, one in that side. We've done a lot of testing on that as well. They're removable, replaceable filters. When you're driving down the road, um, that forces uh, fresh air straight into the filters, pressurizes the inside of the entire cabin. And we've done a lot of work between the individual box sets and the dividers internally to ensure that we've got that good flow of air going all the way through, hits all of the seals and pressurizes the seals uh, to let dust out. Uh, I might say that only place that you would ever maybe have a problem and it's one in a million is on the rear seal in that real fine silty bull dust stuff. Um, Here's a little tip for everyone, and I'll still tell everyone all the time, if you get into that situation, a little bit of Vaseline on the seal, good to go, yeah? That'll keep 99.99% of it out. Um, drawbar, really big focus um, for this year. Uh, my engineers have gone and done something that I swore I would never, ever do. I would never do, and that's fit a fold-up jockey wheel. But now, uh, for everybody who's, who's wanted a fold-up jockey wheel, we now have a fold-up jockey wheel. Again, for me, it was always about not unhitching, and for me, it was a bit of a bit of a statement. I'm not having a fold-up jockey wheel because I used to go on trips very regularly where I wouldn't even take the jockey wheel, believe it or not. I'd leave it in the garage because I just wanted to make the point that what we designed this thing for at its tear weight and its compact size was the ability to take it anywhere your vehicle can go and, and limit as much as possible uh, the performance of the tow vehicle. Um, so that's something that the engineers kind of pulled one on me. I didn't know that was happening until I come back from a trip from overseas, but boys, well done, because it's been received awesome. Everybody's loving it. Um, the drawbar, the entire drawbar has been redesigned. What we've really focused on, and specifically with the X1, we knew that we were gonna be adding weight to the X1 with the addition of the, the composite hard lid, which again, I'll go into that tent set up in another video, um, but we've tried as much as possible to pull weight out of other areas uh, in the camper trailer. So we've lightened up the chassis in the places that we knew we could lighten it without sacrificing uh, any of the, the tribal knowledge that we had here or any of the real world testing. FEA analysis uh, will only get you so far, or computer-aided analysis will only ever get you so far. Uh, it's a requirement now, it's very, very heavy regulations here in the, the towable industry, specifically here in Australia, that we have to meet all of those compliance, but nothing will ever replace real-world testing. So we didn't want to go and change the fundamental um, structure of the yeah. chassis. Now you can see the drawbar, uh, the redesign of the drawbar. We've gone to a box section on the drawbar. What that's allowed us to do is reduce the wall thickness, but increase the strength, which ultimately reduces the weight. And again, it's one of those areas where we've pulled a kilo here or 500 grams there or a couple of kilos there. Um, that all totals up at the, at the end of the, uh, the, the build. So that's something that we've been looking at. Um, you can see the front step. We actually did a lot of prototyping on that front step in aluminium. We've done it in raw aluminium. We've done it in powder coated aluminium. Uh, we found during our testing that, you know, rocks hitting the front of that, that drawbar there and particularly that step. I uh, just wasn't happy with the longevity of the product and what it would look like after a period of time being peppered with stone chips. So we've retained everything at the front of the, uh, of the camper trailer um, in hot dip galvanised. Two reasons for that, obviously corrosion. Uh, so uh, most corrosion resistant products. Now, this is a hot dip galvanised product. This is not painted steel or zinc annealed steel. Um, this actually goes through a process where it goes through a zinc bath, uh, gets heated, the heat process anneals all the welds inside of the chassis, which ultimately stress relieves the chassis as well at the same time. Uh, so when we bring them into the production line, the chassis is dead flat before we go and bolt everything up and ensures that you're not going to get any metal fatigue in the welds uh, over a period of time, um, which is a big one. But I see a lot of our, our, our you know, not com so much competitors, just other manufacturers claiming galvanized chassis will, you know, painted or cold gal spray over the top of blue paint on raw steel will only last so long until you scratch it. So that's something just to be wary of because it is now a very, very uh, expensive process. Uh, DO35 at the front, the latest generation of the DO35. Obviously, we've had a relationship with Cruise Master from the start. Um, that, that's nothing else that, uh, that we would use. And uh, the big one, actually, uh, almost forgot, the drawbar is now standard, has the 200 mil extension over Gen 1. So where the Gen 1 had a 200 mil shorter drawbar, we had an option to put a longer drawbar if you had a tray back ute, or say an American vehicle like a Ram, which is two meters wide. I can swing this past 90 degrees around the back of my TRX, which is uh, evident from the Fraser Island video because I had a bit of a, 
Bit of a moment where I forgot I had a camper trailer on, I was throwing some rubbish out, I reversed up, full lock, left hand down, and smashed the side of my TRX in. This thing actually wrapped around the back of the TRX in the front box, put a big ding in the side of the TRX. So we can go past 90 degrees, standard configuration, which once again, if you're running a tray back ute, or you have a full size Ram, 2500, 3500, or another American vehicle, you can still swing uh, this thing past 90 degrees. One of the options that we've got fitted uh, to the front of this is the, uh, the Peak or Max Trax holder. So this, uh, the, if you tick that box, if you option it, obviously comes with a pair of Max Tracks. Now with the mounting pins, you can hold up to four Max Tracks extremes, but that's not my favorite part about this. Um, what I really love about the new Max Trax holder is under the front, and I've been using this a lot on Gen 2. If you go with the Max Trax holder, you get molly panel along the front as well. Now this is a really handy area. I've actually, I stole a first aid kit from here, which I got reprimanded by our HR manager actually just this week for taking it, not returning it. Uh, so I keep a first aid um, kit right on there. But if you put on axes or whatever else you like, um, it's obviously really handy. You can see how rigid everything in here is all braced with sheet metal as well. Same with these doors. So it's not just a plastic molded product on top. It's a sheet metal frame that's wrapped in this, um, in this great material. Now, this one here you can see has also been fitted with the diesel hot water system, which again, I'll go into uh, maybe a little bit later on. Utility shelf up the top now is now standard. I feel like that's a product that everybody needs. Again, handy for putting in whatever you like. And another option, which I wouldn't buy a Patriot camper without, is obviously the Weber barbecue swing away. This was actually something that my father came up with years and years and years ago. And um, I see this around on uh, all sorts of products now, caravans and camper trailers and all the rest. That brings the barbecue out here. You got the Weber grill. Typically speaking, this is my kind of area. The front man cave that it's been dubbed over the years is still very much the man cave. Um, that's where I keep all of my stuff, keep all of my tools. But the one thing that you will notice actually, if you come back around here, is now, if you remember with the old Wabasto style unit, the Wabasto style unit used to take up this whole interior here. We've now hidden the new Truma diesel hot water system uh, inside the body of the camper trailer, which gives you back twin jerry can storage. So you can put two 20 litre uh, jerry cans in here, carry additional water, additional fuel, or obviously just more space to carry um, whatever you like, which I think is awesome. And obviously we've got a pressurized tap uh, right there at the front for washing hands and all the rest of it. That was a feature that, that was actually on Gen 1. Um, coming around this side of the trailer, really uh, an awesome feature that we fitted is uh, you can see under here, if you can see my boot lighting up there, um, we've got camp scene lights underneath the trailer now as well. That's something that's come obviously from years and years of, of use. Um, typically speaking at night, you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or even if you're just looking for something at night. I've got uh, a, a real habit when I go camping, everything goes under my trailer because if it rains during the night, I don't like dealing with wet stuff the next day. So normally before I go to bed, I'll throw chairs underneath, you know, excess luggage or whatever else that we had will sit underneath the trailer. And it's really good when you're hunting for something. Uh, all of the lights are dimmable. I'll get into that in a second um, when we go through the power module, but you can dim these uh, right down to a really soft glow underneath, um, underneath your trailer. And it's just been in every situation now, every camping situation that I've had with the Gen 2, for me, that's, it's been a, a feature that's, I can't believe it's taken us so long to come up with that. Um, the biggest one, as far as functionality goes, one of, one of the top three, as far as functionality goes, is you'll see uh, that there's no door locks, yeah? And this is something that I actually want to address because I've had this come up a couple of times at the trade shows that I've been to and since we've launched Gen 2, I think there's a little bit of nervousness there when it comes to some of the aspects of automation. But I keep putting it back to the automotive industry, you know, central locking in your car, do you ever worry about that? Losing the remote control for your car, do you ever worry about that? Keyless uh, central locking, uh, actuators now and electronics, these things are so robust and we've put so much time over two years into testing and all of these products. You've got to remember the powered hard lid on the X1H has been around for almost four years now. And um, I can honestly say hand on heart, the failure rate has just been so marginal. It hasn't even been worth uh, talking about. If you've had an X1H that you've had an actuator fail, feel free, put in the comments. I'd love to hear the story because there's only actually one that I can remember. And we've come up with redundancies for all of these products as well. For example, in the front box now, um, you have an override switch for the central locking. 
let's say for example that worst case scenario you sent your camper trailer dead flat right let's say it went dead flat and you're like how do i open my lid how do i get inside my doors um, we've come up with products like underneath there's a jump start pack underneath the trailer so there's a positive and a negative terminal right underneath the chassis there um, which we run through the customer at, at handover and you can jump start your camper trailer so you can use a battery pack like a portable lithium battery pack put power straight on open everything up open and close your lid put your trailer back on charge and get the batteries back to where they need to be or you can use a set of jumper leads now so you can put a set of jumper leads straight onto the trailer um, in the worst case scenario let's say you were uh, uh, have a battery failure or you just ran the battery flat which doesn't happen that often but it does happen um, that you can get around it so i think that's that's a really good feature everything now is uh, push button touch and this was request of of sarah sarah was the one that was behind all of this over center latches and the, the brand of over center latches that we used to have with the over uh, with the uh, vibration clip I would watch very often people that didn't know how to open those latches really struggle with them. How do I get this and that and all the rest of it? It was a muscle memory thing. After you've opened them, you know, a dozen times, you know, you, I still walk up to a Gen 1, you don't even think about it. Once again, functionality for us has been, it's been at the forefront. You know, there was a rule that was put in place right at the start in the first conversations about the development of, if Sarah cannot open and close a trailer in its entirety on its own, it's a fail. So every time that we've developed something new for Gen 2, the first prototype has been set up in the factory, we'd go through and have a look at it and, and operate it, functionality test it and say, yep, we think it's ready for Sarah. Sarah would come down. If she couldn't do it on, on her own, fail. And then we go back to the drawing board on it. And that's been one of the reasons that it's taken so long. Uh, a big one for me before I actually go through this, oh, big one for me, these are all brand new so that all the rubber seals are, are quite hard. And we tell you that during handover, when you go through your handover, you get your trailer, it's brand new. Everything is, it needs time to bed in and everything needs to kind of find its place. But that's, if you get handover of one, we'll, we'll run you through the entire thing. Um, the actual, the, the, the look and, and the word that I use for, um, for the look of the new Gen 2s is, I think they're elegant. I think they're extremely elegant. Um, it was a big one with me and it was a, it was a battle with my team here um, as to really how important the look was. For me, again, it was about keeping that innovation, you know, like doing something that nobody else has done. We charge, we do charge a premium price. We are a premium product. We always have been, and we don't make any, any uh, excuses to not being, you know what I mean? There isn't everybody that can afford a Patriot Camper. So we really want to deliver that what's on the box in every aspect from that first reaction from somebody coming into uh, the showroom. And still, I think the biggest driver for me in Patriot Campers always has been and always will be the same comment that I get all the time, I've seen all the videos and I know I've wanted one and this is the first time I've seen one and it's so much better than I ever imagined as far as quality goes. That's always been the driver for innovation for me, you know, that we do want to keep pushing the bar as far as the design goes and the Australian manufacturing capabilities. You know, we don't have the big manufacturers left here in Australia and everything's kind of moving offshore. And now since, you know, all of COVID's now behind us and all the failures from, from imported products as far as components and completed products, we're now so much more focused on Australian made than we ever have been before. If it's made in Australia and we can readily buy it in, in Australia, that's the component tree or the manufacturing processes and techniques um, that we put onto a Patriot camper. Hence the reason we've gone back to an Australian made awning, which again, that's probably for another video. So you can see um, the rolled look, the aesthetics. I, I just think that it's, it is just an elegant design and, and I'm really proud of the capabilities that are here on site and predominantly in Queensland of all the suppliers um, that supply us the products uh, now and the manufacturing techniques to produce or what I think is, is the most world-class as far as design and, and functionality goes. Before I open the side, a um, couple of things our Gen 1 owners are definitely got to notice. You've now got your power outlet flush with the body. If you remember on Gen 1, it was tucked into the back because it was a, a, more, a quicker access into the service module. Um, we've brought all of them outboard and you'll see on the water fill on the other side, it's the same thing. Much, much easier when it comes to access. I'll talk about the wheels and tires as well. So we've got the Pcor Signature uh, 261 uh, wheels. This is our newest design um, from Pcor. They're now in a 17 inch rim. So we offer 17s as standard on a six on, uh, in a six on 139 stud pattern, which is 
pretty much any dual cab ute is going to be a six on uh, 139. Your Ford Ranger, your uh, Isuzu D-Max, your Toyota Hilux, six on 139, Toyota Prado, you know, that's the most common. Um, you've still got a 33 inch mud terrain. Uh, we, don't, we do not offer uh, the changing of offset and we do not offer the changing of stud pattern. And the reason for that is honestly, and the amount of traveling that I've done over 10 years, I can seriously count on one hand the amount of times um, that I've changed a uh, uh, wheel on a Patriot camper. I think legit, if you watch the thousand hours of Patriot games, and if we blew a tire, we'd show you because it makes good content and people like to see it, right? Um, I don't think you could count five times that on a camper trailer that we've ever uh, changed wheels and tires. So I think there's still that misconcept, and I've said this before in other videos, that you need 45 spare tires to go and tour Australia or tour any country. I, I, I think that's absolute junk. That's probably something that the tire companies market. Underneath suspension wise, um, the biggest change, we're still running on uh, X-Cruise, uh, X-Cruise suspension on airbags, roll sleeve airbags with dual shocks. The biggest change for us for Gen 2 is our increase in diameter in our stub axle. So we've gone from a stub axle that was, don't quote me on this, I think it was 33 mil diameter and it's now up to a 40 or 42 mil diameter. It's about 30% bigger. What we've been finding over the years with Patriot uh, campers and I think just the towing industry and specifically vehicles, which I don't wanna make this video about that, is just everybody just overloading the amount of gear that people take now. And I don't, not necessarily a bad thing, there's more stuff available, more batteries, more solar, more fold up this and collapsible that and pizza ovens to my Mexican mate, you know who I'm talking about and blenders and all the rest of it. Just, I'm still very simple when I go camping. You watch Patriot Games, I don't take all of that junk with me, but people do and that's fine. We're accommodating to that market. So we started experiencing every now and again, I think we've had six cases over the years of people shearing stub axles. There's a million reasons for it, right? And I think every one of those guys, no questions asked warranty, we just send out a new arm and Cruise Master have backed us on that from day one. But now, considering people are carrying more gear, uh, we just wanted to strengthen everything up. We've got 30% bigger on the stub axle, but just as importantly, we've married that to a 12 inch brake, more stopping power. People are loading more, the trailers are getting heavier um, from people loading them. Um, and we just wanna make sure that everybody's get, uh, kept safe um, on the road. Huge, huge, huge change. Massive change here um, is definitely going to be, I'll just get that barbecue, oh, it's not in the way. Um, big change is our new kitchen. So, Dometic 75 litre, right across the range. Now, once again, this has come from, you know, for customers and a lot of feedback from customers and listening to customers over the year. Again, people want to carry more stuff. They want to go for longer or they want to be more comfortable. So we've gone with the dual zone Dometic 75 litre right across the range. So whether it's X3, uh, X1 or X1N, uh, the Dometic 75 litre dual zone, that's our staple fridge. There are a couple of other fridges that will fit in, but this is specifically designed for the Dometic 75 litre. So I can't even remember the last time I saw a customer fit a different brand of fridge um, into a trailer. All right, now the kitchen redesign. Um, we secured and we fastened everything on the new design, stop everything vibrating and moving around. Uh, a really big change for me this year is stainless steel drawer slides now. Um, we've got rid of the old zinc ones um, that we used to get. Um, we had a lot of problems with them with changing hole centers and they just didn't last. They just used to get surface rust on top. A lot of my customers would know, I used to recommend to everybody, every time you put your kitchen away, give it a spray with canola oil or a spray bottle of oil just to keep them uh, looking really good. Uh, now we've also increased bench space um, dramatically. And when I say dramatically, um, it's about 30% more bench space you get in the Gen 2 compared to the Gen 1. But again, functionality has been the key to all of this. What we're always finding when Sarah and I were cooking, she'd have her bench down, she'd be prepping or doing whatever she was doing in here. I'm always cooking on that side. This fridge, that became my bench all the time. Didn't matter what I was doing. There'd be tongs, meat, whatever. And it was just one of those annoying things that every time she needed to access it. So one of the discussions that her, her and I had was having the addition of a bench come out of the barbecue or whatever. We went through all of these different designs and we just couldn't solve it. And we ended up coming up uh, with this design and it was actually at SEMA 
uh, last year, I sent an email back to the engineering team here and the idea kind of came for the flip up bench and, and the boys here made it happen. Um, but what we're finding from a functionality point of view, this has just been a godsend because if I'm cooking, I'm using this area, she's using this area. Then when we're done, same with washing up. If I'm washing up off the tap, which I'll typically will do, I'll clean all my barbecue plates, all my long tongs and everything from the front, or Sarah or whoever, one of the kids is over on this side, everything just ends up on the drying rack and it just sits there till the morning. Uh, when you've got the awning out, the awning deployed, the awning covers this entire area and goes over half of that barbecue as well. Um, so we normally just let that stuff just drip, uh, dry overnight and then put it away. We've still got the same sink, uh, same sink as we were running in the Gen 1. Uh, we found the height and the dimensions of this sink. We, we really couldn't improve on this. This does fit a full-size dish plate, not like the early uh, Gen 1s. Um, and so you've got that ability there. Uh, you've still got um, your storage underneath here for plates and uh, you know your kitchen cooking accessories. Although you have sacrificed a bit of space here because of these, um, the actual mechanism that will flip the lid up. So we've lost about 75 mil, I want to say, to the side. Uh, cutlery drawer, uh, you still have in underneath. Once again, that's lost a little bit of size, but we found uh, for us and even for the family of five, there's still ample space in there. So there is a couple of compromises with the, with the new design. Um, as far as uh, the layout goes, which not everybody is going to completely agree with, but I think the fundamentals, um, you can't really kind of argue with what we've done there. The bench space, like I said, you've got about 30% more bench space. Now, this is very similar in size to what the X3 used to be. Now, for our X3 users, you'll remember that you had another partition in here. Uh, all the trailers now are all equal lengths as well. So every single one of the lineup, X3, X1 and X1N, now comes in at 3.74 metres. Let's call it 3.7 for the sake of this video. The old model came in at 3.5 with the spare wheel swing away, but you now have a 200 mil extended drawbar and you've got more volume now uh, in the X1. This, is, this partition here is slightly longer and obviously to accommodate the 75 litre fridge, um, we've got about 50 or 75 mil longer uh, on this one as well. Still got the Rymex bench tops, so stainless steel scratch resistant bench tops. These have worked a treat for us over the years. They last, you, you, again, you watch Patriot Games, you watch me cut straight on top of these, fillet fish, all the rest of it. I'll start from the right to left. Um, you've still got your pantry drawers. Uh, this drawer's gotten a little bit deeper and a little bit wider, and then you've got the high output uh, Dometic twin burner stove with a grill underneath. Uh, in Australia, to me, that's the only stove to have. Uh, whatever fitting or um, that you'd want to put in, that is definitely the pick of the stoves. Unfortunately, it's not available in the United States. Uh, we're providing a couple of different brands in the US um, as factory fitment as standard, but they are low output flames, so they don't really perform in high wind. Uh, a lot of our customers are upgrading to partner stoves as well. I, I haven't used one personally, um, but there's a tip for the US customers. If you do order a Gen 2, uh, maybe jump on the owner's forums and have a look and get some, um, some recommendations. We haven't found anything in the US that's compliant in the US that really performs as well as the Dometic stove uh, does. You can see here the new Truma controller. I'll quickly touch on this. Now, we have from day one with the Webasto, we had the ability with the Webasto to heat the tent. We always told customers it will take the chill out of the air. It won't specifically heat the tent. The new Truma system is unbelievable. And I am talking out of this world unbelievable. I've spent that many nights in, I remember my first trip testing with the new Truma in the Gen 2 in the cold was actually Flinders Ranges. My father was in the X1, I was in the X3. We we're both sitting around the campfire. We went and started our tent heaters. Then we went and sat at the fire for about 15 minutes. We we're like, right, we're going to bed. Both of us got up half an hour later and had to turn our heaters off. They were that efficient. Like we, you literally couldn't breathe it turned the, uh, the tents into saunas. Now, obviously they're temperature controlled. They have a thermostat inside there uh, now, but whilst we were testing, we actually had the thermostats in the wrong position. We didn't have them close enough to the bed. So we were controlling the tent, uh, the heat at the coldest part of the tent. Engineering team have resolved all of that. Now we have the thermostats very close to where you're sleeping and you can control the temperature. One of the options that we've actually just uh, listed on the options list by the time you see this is now we have a Bluetooth connectivity app. One of the things that I found was it was quite annoying in the X3 and the X1 if you wanted to adjust the temperature, you had to get out of the tent 
and, uh, and come and adjust it from here. And you'll find you'll still have to do that unless you option on the additional Bluetooth module. It is quite a big module. Uh, there's a bit involved in the install. Um, but I think for the right people, um, I think it, it's definitely worth the, the money that it's, that it's worth at, at retail. Um, obviously, you have hot water as well. So your hot water is plumbed to the sink. Um, and that's the other advantage of, of optioning this system on. Here's how I'd say it to everyone. If you live in cold climates, where you have young children or you have someone in your family who doesn't handle uh, the cold well, I would option it in a heartbeat. For me personally, living in Queensland and most of the camping I do in Queensland, I probably couldn't justify uh, the price um, for installation of that unit. Customers in the United States, I would say definitely 100% because of the, the elevation fluctuations that you guys have and the temperature fluctuations that you guys, guys have between summer and winter, um, I think it's a great option. Red Vision um, needs zero introduction. You know how I feel about Red Arc. Anything Red Arc, if they produce a product, I'm like, yep, that's ours. Well, that's just what we install. So this 23 model uh, Gen 2 is option uh, with the Red Vision, uh, which comes with the tech pack. Um, so if you don't go with the tech pack, you just get the standard uh, BMS grain. This is really a staple item for me. Um, I consider the biggest advantage of this is really the connectivity with your Bluetooth, with your app, and it's something that you just have to have, to be perfectly honest with you. The ability to control your camper trailer from inside of your tent is where that, look, for me, I was always kind of absolutely kind of gimmicky and all the rest of it when it comes to camping. When it comes to this thing, definitely not. You know, you can just waltz into bed at night, jump into bed, get yourself set up, get comfy, grab your phone and go off, 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 off. Leave your, your floor lights on, dim them down. Same thing in the middle of the night. You can just pick up your phone, turn on whatever light that you like, get out, do whatever you want to do. And, uh, and get back into the trailer. So for me, I won't go through everything that the Red Vision does. Um, I've done multiple videos on that, but from a usability functionality point of view, um, that's definitely the way to go. And now with the new Rogue Edition that we have in Gen 2, which we didn't have in Gen 1, every single light is dimmable and you no, no longer have any fuses in the camper trailer when it comes to your standard 12 volt stuff. There are some other fuses, but anything to do with this faceplate, uh, it's all solid state now. So there's no, no changing of fuses. Uh, you can also see that we have 12 volts. So we have USB here, cigarette. Um, I'm getting that a lot. Why are you guys still use cigarette? Talk to Sarah. She's got this flexi camp light that hangs on either end of the camper trailer that's only on a cigarette plug. And so she won't let us get rid of the cigarette plug, but yeah. I don't know. Airbag controls are here. You've also got a rocker switch. So this is your redundancy for your powered lid. So let's say you lose or damage the remote control, you use the rocker. But what I would typically find for setup, I don't even grab the remote control, I just use the rocker. Underneath here, one of the, one of the big things for the current models is uh, the new compliance rules that are coming in um, in Australia uh, around 240 volt. They've, they have been around for a while, but they're getting a little bit more stricter um, this year. And we've combated all of that. You've got 240 volt outlets here or 110 volt outlets. And then you've obviously got a circuit breaker um, and RCD there. So you can put your coffee machine up on the bench or whatever other appliances that you want to run. Um, and that's standard right throughout the range now on X-Ray, X1 and even X1N. 1500 watt inverter, a standard. Um, you can get them upfitted. Uh, once again, we're finding 1500 watts will do anything that you need. It'll run our Nespresso coffee machine. It'll run hair dryers. It'll run uh, hair straighteners or whatever else uh, power wise that you need. So that's probably a bit of a run through the, um, the kitchen there. Um, before I come around that side, I'll just talk about the um, wet storage boxes. We kind of toyed with the idea of getting rid of them, to be honest with you. Um, we actually did do the design and it was enclosed. And look, the way I kind of considered the wet storage boxes, A, from a functionality point of view, even at Fraser Island, I was just stuffing everything in there. I did literally have the bait in there. I was putting my floor mats in there uh, every night. And I think the wet storage boxes are just one of those, it's part of the Patriot makeup, right? It's part of the Patriot brand. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's those front headlights on a Porsche, you know, it's just something that the Patriot will always have. Uh, so you got one on either side and just one on the driver's side or passenger side if you're in the US um, on the Patriot X-Ray. Coming around the back, you can see the styling of the back. Uh, once again, 
Um, we've really focused on that on that styling, giving the thing some shape and some body. Uh, tail lights have actually been moved up out of the rear bar, a uh, little bit more protection. Um, and you can see we've got a big tube uh, rear bar on the back. So uh, especially a lot of our ambassadors, you know, and, and even me, for example, the guys that were really beating on their trailers, um, we did damage rear bars was the one thing that we replaced, not often, um, but we did replace them. Um, now you've got no ability to really hang up on that rear bar. It is built like a rock slider. Uh, it's bolted back to the main chassis. Um, it's very, very heavy wall tube. Uh, and it's just something that you can, a little bit more peace of mind. You know, those big rock step ups or, you know, big ruts or any of that sort of stuff that you want to drop into uh, with your car. If you're in a, in a built car, you know that the Patriot's going to follow. And once again, it comes back to that whole, that whole mantra of never having to unhitch. So that's the reason that's there. Um, one thing I didn't talk about on the side is the actual colour styling. So there's only two colours available in the Gen 2 range. Uh, we just noticed from really from our inventory holding point of view and uh, looking at our, our sales and looking at what customers were picking. Uh, unfortunately, we've dropped the original uh, Patriot Green colour, um, which is a little bit heartbreaking for me, but the sales volume just wasn't there. Um, and for us now with our manufacturing facility, we're trying to streamline as much as possible. So our two biggest colour sales by a long shot was the graphite or the white. So we only offer graphite in Gen 2 or white. If you pick a graphite uh, trailer, you get the red highlights in your decals and you get black rims. But if you pick a white trailer, you get the yellow decals and the machine face rims. So on any model, uh, whether it's X3, X1 or X1N, if you pick that color choice, that's the decal highlight that you get with it and that's the wheel uh, that comes with it um, as well. We've done a lot of things when it comes to, you know, badging again, uh, really automotive sort of style is, is what we're going for. And we're really going for that high end and, and offering the customers um, the value for money for you know, what their investment deserves into the, the products, uh, not just on the aesthetic look, but the final fittings, touches, finishes. Um, to me, all of that stuff is, is extremely important. Now, the X1 and the X1N offer 2,050 litres of storage, uh, whereas the X3 offers 1,850 litres of storage. So you're talking 72 cubic foot versus 65 cubic feet uh, of storage. Like I said at the start of the video, it's not really a big difference. I do consider that this storage is a lot more usable though. Once again, we've retained the drawers uh, down the bottom, uh, same as the Gen 1 was. You've got Rymex bench tops. But this gives you the ability to store things like camp ovens, solar panels, uh, chairs, folding tables. And I'm picking that real awkward bulky stuff that you never have anywhere to put it. And even a lot of the other designs that I see these days, they're not really thought with people that are traveling uh, in mind. Worth noting, while I do say solar panel though, the X1 comes with 120 watt solar panel as standard on top as well, comes with a red arc solar panel, which I do find is more than enough with the way that the charges are going these days. Uh, and we do come with 270 amp hours of AGM battery power. There is lithium available as an option. I do prefer the lithium now these days. I'm sold on lithium because the way that you can replenish lithium uh, from DC charge and also from solar. DC charge, I mean from driving from your car. I don't really see the name, need for big AC inputs now that the technology on lithium batteries, but specifically the way you can put charge back into those batteries is going these days. Um, but back to where I was at, you've got another little storage area there. Got a handy little pole storage um, up there at the top. So some of the features um, that we had, and you've got some tie down points in the back now as well. Um, and these tie down points are, are quite handy. The rear drawer has been redesigned um, and it's just a, a little bit more usability, I suppose, as far as the dividers go. Uh, in the Gen 1s, the dividers could be a bit clunky to get in and out. Um, we're utilising a lot of uh, technology now with our bending processes, with the addition of our new bending cell. I think there's a lot of competitors that have, you know, kind of been nipping at the heels of Patriot Campers when it come to Gen 1. But I think Gen 2, that we've, we've really lifted the standard again as far as manufacturing processes go and, um, and what we're kind of offering is as standard product now in the Gen 2 range. Once again, that's going to be quite subjective and um, but that is genuinely the way that I feel. And before I close the door, uh, you'll notice we've got traction struts as well now. Um, they've replaced the cables. 
Again, it's one of those functionality things. Well, really two reasons for the, um, for the struts. One, functionality, the cables kind of used to get like, you know, it wasn't a massive deal, but it could get a little bit frustrating when you had a cable that wanted to bend around the seal and trying to tuck it back in. Um, so that uh, alleviates that. But it also what it does is it gives, um, it provides that mechanism. Again, going back to those door seals, everything's brand new. And you'll see me click both sides. The reason that I'm clicking both sides, like I said before, the rubber kind of needs to bed in a little bit. That'll kind of get a little bit softer over time, like a, like a door on a brand new car. Um, but that's also providing a little bit of pressure with the traction struts. Click the release on the rear. So again, that's just grabbing a little bit and there's no, um, no smoke screens and mirrors in this video. Um, that gives you the ability for the, um, to pop that, that door out so you can open it. Um, moving around this side, I, I, look, before I said I won't talk about the lids, but this over center latch now compared to the big, um, you know, the big over center latches that we had with the anti-vibration clips. Absolutely anybody can do that. Um, it's got a rubber bungee in there. Just some products that we've been sourcing over years and years and years, um, you know, from tra different trade shows around the world and supplier catalogs and really ensuring that we were staying on top of, you know, uh, what we were gonna launch with Gen 2 and very, very, very focused on the functionality um, making it easy uh, for everybody. Um, we've still got the, the twin recovery points on the back. So you put a bridle out, I've covered that in another video, um, so you can recover the full weight of the trailer. But what I did want to focus on is the actual hitch receiver in the back, which is predominantly what it was designed to do, was to hold a push bike rack at the back. Uh, you want to carry a couple of mountain bikes or the kids bikes or whatever. You've now got a lot more usability because if you remember on Gen 1, you had the spare tire about 300 mil hanging out the back of the trailer. It was it was hard to find a, a push bike rack that was kind of long enough tongue and they, they didn't get in the way, they didn't function. You get a fold down one now, you pull the bikes off, fold it down, you can drop the tailgate and you retain uh, the full use there. A full size 33 inch spare is now up underneath the drawbar. It's narrower and it comes on a steel wheel, so it's a low profile tire, but it's still a mud terrain. Uh, it'll get you out of trouble, get whatever you, wherever you needed to go, or you know, you could do 50,000 kilometers on it like you would on a standard peak or wheel with a wide tire. It's obviously just not gonna look as cool. And that's how we got the ability to retain the length uh, of the overall trailer, even with the bigger body, um, with a bigger cab and more bench space, by getting rid of that spare tire off the back and it just cleans that entire look up. Coming up the right hand side of the trailer, a big, big change functionality uh, is the location now of the water uh, filler. Couple of reasons for that. One, so much easier to fill now being on the outside. Uh, our Gen 1 owners will remember it was tucked in underneath there. Um, this just makes it a lot, uh, a lot better when it comes to usability. The second thing it does is it gives you a direct feed straight into the tank. So any breather sort of issues, um, you don't have any breather issues with, uh, with the new uh, Gen 2. It's a completely re redesigned water tank. We've actually got it to sit a little bit lower in the chassis, offering it um, a better center of gravity. Um, we're molding the tank at 160 litres, but we're quoting 150 litres. Now, because they're rotor molded tanks, and what they do is once they put all the plastic inside of the mold, they spin the thing around in like a gyro type thing, like you'd see at a circus. And that, what it does is rotates all of the plastic inside of the mold. You, and you do get thickness variance in the mold. So typically speaking, we're aiming for 160 litres, but we quote everybody 150 litres um, just to ensure that we're delivering to everybody um, what we say, which is about 39 gallons, yeah? You still got the ability to use rotor packs or jerry cans if you're one of those, um, one of those campers that just loves to guzzle water. Uh, up the front, you've got your solar input. The solar panel that's mounted to the lid on the, uh, on the X1 is hardwired, so that's an additional solar input. And now we've given you, we've gone to a slightly bigger air compressor. Um, so this air compressor flows about 76 litres a minute. Um, so kind of what we thought with Gen 2 is we're doing all the wiring, we're installing an air compressor. It would be nice to be able to inflate um, the tyres on your vehicle from an onboard air compressor. It's not like a big twin air compressor. It's not gonna you know, pump up 35s in, in a minute. Another thing that we've been using it for, which kind of came organically off the back of having the availability, having it there, we've been using it a lot for cleaning, blowing out the inside of the floor and the X3, you know, we're at Fraser Island, getting up on the top, 
uh, getting inside the trailer, sorry, and having some sand on your feet, you'd blow it out. Once again, it's not like, you know, the things, that's not what it's designed to do, but it does have the ability to do it. So really, really, um, really nice feature. So in the side, um, in the, uh, the right-hand side, um, you can see that all the Patriot supply gear has been decked out. Um, and this, I didn't even know these were in here, guys, to be perfectly honest with you, but that's good that they're there. Available from Patriot Supply. Um, you can fit five storage boxes. You've heard me say this in many, many videos, and it's still the way my family rolls. When we go family camping, even at this age now with the kids, if they can't fit everything they need in that box, it doesn't come on the trip. And that's whether we're going for a weekend or we're going for two weeks. It is amazing what you can go camping on or the reduction of stuff that you can go camping on if you really put your mind to it. And if you look at that and say, there's no way I could do that and my kids could do that, give it a go, try it. Just trust me, try it. Um, at the end of the day, you're out camping. If you wear a t-shirt for two days in a row, who cares, you know what I mean? Don't take more stuff than you need. I don't think that's really what camping um, is all about. Not to me anyway. Um, so you can fit five storage boxes in the side. Um, utility shelf has a slightly changed in the right hand box. It is a little bit bigger. Um, and this is also now uh, the inverter. Uh, the Gen 1 customers will notice the inverter is now removed. It is now inside of the trailer as well. So it's now integrated uh, into the trailer, which is a really, really handy feature. And then when I said before, you've got no fuses on anything that's on the TVMS. These are the only fuses and breakers that you have available now. So you've got your jump start main breaker there. You've got a 40 amp fuse there for your air compressor. And I won't go through them all, but for your central locking and some of your other stuff, you've got your normal blade style fuses there. So there's only two locations that you really need to be looking besides the main breakers for the trailer, um, which you should never have to touch, which are inside of um, this box here. Now, in this one here, there's a couple of things to talk about, a couple of things to discuss in here. Um, you've got Molly panel on both the kitchen uh, door and on this side box door. Once again, Molly panel, if you're not familiar with it. And if you see those military guys, you know, like the US Army and they've got all that stuff all over them, you see them walking around, they look like monsters. That's all Molly that holds all the stuff onto their vests and whatever. So again, first aid kits and lots of other uh, packages, jump online, look at Molly style canvas bags and that, really handy for in here. Now, if you weren't running the diesel hot water system, which you can see is located in here now, like I said before, it's been taken out of the front box and it's consuming this area here, which I actually use to this area here um, to house my camp stove, but now I've regained all of that area in the front box. This is where your propane or gas hot water system um, would be. We mounted here. It comes now with a storage tray at the bottom, which is really handy. We we're finding with those uh, gas hot water systems that the brackets, after a long time of vibrating, they'd crack at the bottom. So now we've uh, developed a cradle uh, to hold them in. So the storage area at the bottom here is uh, perfect for a porta potty and I'm seeing so many more people carrying them now. There's so many different types. I don't even know what the right one is. Um, but you can see even if I push that up into that corner, you've still got a massive amount of storage uh, area in there. So that's, that's another uh, great storage area. What we might quickly do, we'll whip around here and I'll show you that um, I'll show you the gas hot water system so we're now at the X1N uh, just next door so this is the propane hot water system you can see that we've got this cradle that's built in um, which just gives it a lot more area to, to sit into and it ensures that nothing's going to crack or, or break like I said on the these brackets they tend to not really like the um, the vibration so if I just pop that out you can see at the back here that you've got a hook um, and it's worthwhile saying this is a storage location area uh, due to the uh, regulations here in Australia. You can't actually run them uh, inside or fixed. And then we just got this little hook at the front here and you just run it off there. You connect the water directly to your draw bar tap and it comes with a five metre shower rose and, um, and you run that out to, um, to hopefully your Patriot Supply shower tent. <laughs> And there's a bit of a run through on the Patriot Campus Gen 2 um, from my perspective right here at Patriot Campus HQ. And it's ironic that 
you know, my first time back in the presentation of a Patriot Campus model is, you know, in the place and behind these doors here and other, other boys and girls that I feel build the best products in Australia and if not the world. You know, the, the Patriot Campus mantra hasn't changed from day one. We still represent exactly what we represented almost 10 years ago when we built the first Patriot Camper X1. I wanted to have those experiences with my family that I couldn't get with towing, you know, a larger, a larger vehicle behind me. I wanted to go remote. I didn't want to be near anyone else. I wanted to be able to take the kitchen with me, but I wanted to do it comfortably. I wanted my wife to have a good time. I wanted my kids to have everything on board um, that they needed. And you know, now the kids are getting a little bit older and you can see the model range starting to change um, throughout Patriot Campus history. I think we're now back to what I ultimately would have wanted um, from the product when I designed the first one. And what's given us the ability to do that is our manufacturing techniques have evolved probably more than the style in which we camp. We now have the facilities, we have the technology, we have the staff, um, we have the skill sets, we have the know-how um, to really take um, this product to the next level. And I think with Gen 2 um, that we've absolutely achieved it. So this season on Patriot Games, you're gonna see the family get back to some real grassroots touring. We're super excited to go out and really test these things to the limit. We said in series one, no one tests like we do. And I think what you see behind us today, um, it all stems from the same place of, you know, us going out and doing what we do best. So keep an eye out for Patriot Games throughout the season. You're gonna see the trailers being used in all different situations. Um, we've got the dealer network around Australia and obviously Patriot Campus Las Vegas. You can obviously check out the website for further information, model specs, details, and all the rest of it. Uh, keep an eye out for more videos on the Patriot Campus channel where I'll keep running you through the new Patriot Campus Gen 2 lineup.